Hi everyone, welcome back to part three of this uh, little tutorial series about this rotating glass background with a little platform thing. So the platform itself was discussed in part one, the motor kit was discussed in part two. And of course I did mention that you can buy these ready-made with a motor in part one. And of course you don't have to actually motorize this, you can just spin it and let it go like that. So the, the motor is and optional and of course the glass is optional you can get these from plastic and other things but for me this is what works for my uses so let's take a look at what we're using here so we have a glass background let me show you that so there it is right there glass background sitting on a glass table there's a piece of paper right there on the table that's like allowing the light to come through but allowing it to just be to just give us a nice perfect white and then now before I, uh, just quickly, before I um, discuss the lighting, let me show you that uh, the lighting we have here. We have uh, two lights underneath and two light and uh, one light at the top. And then as you can see, you know, if I block that top light, then, uh, you know, it does get a little bit darker, but that top light, which I'll show in a second, is very, very weak. So, um, I have 10 bulbs there, so basically five in each one. These are my soft boxes. And then up there, I just have one bulb that's not even pointing in the right direction. So it's much, much, much weaker than these. And that's something that when I work with lighting, the most important thing, the most important sort of theory behind the way that I light things is the ratio of light. How much, uh, you know, how much light am I using or how am I using it compared to something else and sort of how, and like another light and how much is there compared to another light in the scene so basically just working with the ratios so uh, as an example here I have a very very small amount at the top compared to a very large amount uh, right here and I would do the same thing for a portrait you know sometimes I would want a very strong backlight or sometimes I would want no backlight at all, or very, very little backlight. So again, working with ratios. So uh, these two soft boxes are my current choice for this, mainly because then I can just really quickly take them and put them on stands and use them with my big white background, which I've uh, discussed. And I've shown these in that video where I show the big white background where I actually stand in front of rather than just for products. And so that's at the other side of the studio. And then, uh, so, uh, I, you know, I really like these. They aren't perfect, they're not great for travel, but they are really lovely in the studio. They're very low cost and they are dimmable and they do give a really, really lovely light. And by the way, when I say dimmable, you can turn off the bulbs individually and there's five bulbs, so there's five steps of dimmability. So that's better than, uh, better than nothing. So, uh, okay, so the setup right here, as you can see, if I turn off, that top light and then I make this bright enough to actually expose this then you can see that we uh, sorry one second okay there we go so what you can see here is that this is already getting so bright here that even though this sort of looks the correct color as you can see when I bring my hand close to it it gets darker so this actually if you can see this as my hand comes close to it, it gets darker. And that's because when I bring my hand close, I'm actually blocking off the ref the um, the glare that's, that's happening inside the lens. So there's so much light that it's actually causing the lens to flare up. And, uh, and we don't want that. And also this is going to be eating up a little bit too much of our corners from the item. So uh, it's basically gonna making, be making them a little bit too bright. And of course that will really, really depend on the item that you're using and its color and how reflective it is. So for, th for some things I would use just the backlight, but it is a very, a very sort of special effect where it has a very, very strong, if you look at my hand right here, you can see it has a very, very strong wraparound sort of lighting effect. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that top light back on and reduce my exposure a little bit. And then now you can see that we still have a white background, but the image is a little more, you could say a little more normal, still a sort of wraparound light. But as you can see right now, when I, if I'm only blocking the light coming from here, there's very, very little um, 
flare. There is still some, so we're still getting a little bit of flare happening in the lens, which is basically sort of uh, reflections in the lens, but it is less, and for me, it's, it's a, at an acceptable level. And then normally, I would have a lot less than this because I wouldn't be shooting this wide. I wouldn't have all of this white area giving me flare. And of course I could be using uh, something like a, a matte box or what I actually have on here is a, a lens um, hood. So normally I would actually only be shooting the item. So in that case, flare isn't such a huge issue. And of course, if you have a fairly okay lens, then again, it's not gonna be a huge issue. So that is basically it. That is the lighting setup. And of course, if you have questions, feel free to ask me in the uh, comments below. Uh, 